Yo, 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 what's up? This your boy M. Breezy back at it again, man, like I always do around this time. What's up, Cowboy Nation? What's up, YouTube? Hey, man, before we get started with this video today, man, hit the subscribe button, hit that like button. After watching this video, man, please share and let's continue to help the channel grow. So let's get right into it. Jerry Jones. Jerry Jones was not having it today on 105.3 The Fan, the radio, sto radio show out here in Dallas, Sports Talk Radio Show. And man, Jerry Jones was not going for it today. Uh, after that loss Sunday against the Detroit Lions with that beat down 47-9, and the berate or question that they were, was going to ask him today, he was not having it. He didn't want to hear it. And Jerry Jones got into that defense mode. Uh, boy, hey, it's a thing of brutal. We're going we're gonna to dive right into it, man, and uh, listen to what Jerry Jones had to say today. But first, we're going to listen to the uh, – I want, I want y'all guys to listen to the uh, this post-game uh, response that Dyke Prescott had to uh, say uh, about the game against the Detroit Lions Sunday, man. This guy here, man, like I said, this guy here is – some of the things that this guy say is unbelievable. And, boy, this guy is arrogant. And, he, like I said, Dyke Prescott knows that he is not worth all this money, man. This guy knows it. The guy got away with murder. He fleeced Jerry Jones some kind of way, man. But I guess guess it's, it's because of the fandom. And uh, Dyke Prescott uh, – because, you know, there's a lot of people like Dyke Prescott. A lot of these fanboys out here, like they praise Dyke Prescott. So – Jerry Jones looking at that money, man, marketing-wise and all this, that, and the third. So, I believe that's, that was a big part of why Jerry Jones signed that Prince guy. But let's listen to what this guy had to say, man. It's, it's, it's unbelievable what, this guy, what comes out of this guy's mouth. Uh, I think we can. We just didn't do them out there today. Concerning, uh, I'm not a guy to hit, hit the panic button. Um, I, I get to have the ball in my hands. I get to lead this offense. I get to lead this team. Hard for me to say that. What would it take you to evaluate making a head coaching change in season? Oh, I haven't even. Uh, consider that. I'm not considering that. Just so you're clear, I'm but, not considering that. But you've done it Don't, once I, before. I wouldn't be a hypothetical in that matter. Do you think I'm an idiot? Do you? Okay. Well, I'm not going hypothetical with you about when I'd consider coaching change in light of the timing we're sitting here with. I'm not at all. Man, did you hear Dak Prescott say he's not in panic mode at all? As long as he got the ball in his hand so he can lead his team. Did you guys just hear what this man just say? What in the hell? Why are you not in panic mode? Why? Oh, oh, I get it. You so cool, calm, and collective that you got everything under control. You want the ball in your hand so you can lead this football team. Well, what in the hell are you leading this team to? Getting embarrassed? Getting beat down every home game? Get you the worst quarterback in the red zone for his turnover wise. You the worst quarterback in the NFL, and you the highest paid. But you continue to turn the ball over. This guy, like I say, man, this guy is unbelievable. This guy getting that press conference. This guy, hey, that's the only thing this guy good at, man, is, is talking in that press conference over and over and over, repeat the same cycle. Everything he say. This guy is man. But this, this, this is what you guys like. You guys want this guy on your football team, leading your team. He's not in panic mode. Oh, no. He's not in panic mode at all. Y'all y'all heard what he just said. He's cool, calm, and collected Randy Carter Prescott. This man can knock down $3 million houses and rebuild like it ain't nothing. Like I said, he got plenty of money. This man don't have no uh, uh, urgency to do nothing. This man don't worry about winning no championship. He's not, he not worried about winning more than one playoff game a year. He's not worried about uh, uh, advancing to the NFC championship game. This man not worried about going to the Super Bowl. This man is content on where he is. An incompetent quarterback that cannot read defenses and cannot throw the receivers open. And the guy, hey, the guy is, hey, this is what we got. We st stuck with this guy, man. We were stuck with him. But this is what you guys want. This is what you guys want. And Mike McCarthy, Jerry Jones, you know, he don't really too much trade uh, fire coaches at, uh, in the middle of a football season. But he did to uh, Wade Wilson back in 2010. But, hey, Jerry Jones, man, you know, like I say, he going to do everything his way. If you like it or not, if you, if you don't like it and you want to complain about it, go find another team. That's all we're saying. Stop bitching and complaining because this man is showing you every day that he's not going to do what you want. He's going to do it, do it his way. If you don't like it, you can leave or go find somebody to cheer for. And, we, and we're going to dive right into this Jerry Jones uh, interview today, man, on 105.3 The Fan, where it got real hectic, man. It got real hectic in there. So let's go ahead and dive right into it, man. Let's go ahead and dive right on into it. 
Jerry Jones here on the fan. Jerry, I don't like to throw around because I can't judge it on the field. I never played or coached. The word quit gets You or anybody else can't you or anybody else can specifically judge it on the field. <laughs> There's a thousand people that have got all the answers. It's fundamentally they're different. Yeah. Uh, they look at the same play. Bill Parcells has said if you're on the different side of the ball, if you're a head coach, your defensive coordinator can bullshit you. <laughs> if that's not your side of the ball. So there's no given fact answer. So, hey, Mike Zimmer is bullshitting you guys. He just, hear, he just quoted for Bill Parcells. If you're not on, on the other side of the ball, the other side of the ball, that coach can bullshit you. And Mike Zimmer don't bullshit all you fanboys because that's what you guys wanted. You didn't want Dan Quinn. You wanted Mike Zimmer. Hey, Jerry, hey, Jerry don't get y'all what you wanted. Uh, about how to handle all the moving parts. Now, this is the life we've chosen, and we've got to be a lot better at handling all those moving parts than we were out there Sunday. That goes without saying. Totally unacceptable. Jerry, was was lack of prep or lack of effort a bigger issue Sunday? Roll everything. Roll everything up and take some of each all of the things that you do to get your team ready. And all of the teams, that, whether that be your classwork, whether that be your practice, roll all of it up. And uh, they were able to expose in a negative way for us most of those things. Uh, you can have a percentage improvement in all areas of putting a team on the football field, and you'll come up with a better result. We didn't play well. We made a lot of mistakes. We turned the ball over. We did all of the things that'll get you to know what really went out of the stadium, and that happened to us. Jerry, you've made one in-season coaching change uh, in your time here, and that was back in 2010. And I know the records are different. You were one in seven versus. Yeah, and three. I won't be making, and I won't be making any others during so, in the season. So, what is different then about this year, the way the team is performing versus 2010? We were one in seven. At that time, one in seven. And uh, I think, as I recall, uh, we'd gotten beat the week before for about the exact same score. We were on the road, but not at home. But about the exact score that we got beat Sunday, we got beat. And uh, so I made the change, and we had one win. A little bit of difference there, man. It is. Uh, what, are, what are your just overall thoughts, the pros and cons of in-season changes? as I'm sure you've weighed in the past. They aren't good, and they usually are ineffective, and um, uh, they just aren't good. And uh, they've got to be, uh, uh, at that particular time, uh, I did think it was the thing to do. Uh, I think it did uh, uh, produce a positive effect, but we'll never know, will we, <laughs> of what Wade. All Wade did was move over to uh, Denver, uh, he didn't become the head coach. He became the defensive coordinator and was one of the few times in my 35 years in the NFL that I heard throughout the league that the one coach was responsible for them having the team, and that was Wade Phillips running the defense for Denver when they won the Super Bowl. Now, that was the coach I'd let go out of here just a few years earlier. So, so much for knee-jerking on one and seven. And, and I believe that uh, that's the year, man, that uh, our offensive coordinator was Jason Garrett. And Jason Garrett, I believe he he um, he ran he, – he, he called some bad plays, man, that he know that was not going to work. And J Jason Garrett ran Wade Phillips out of uh, – out of uh, as being for as being the quarterback, the head coach for the uh, Dallas Cowboys. Jason Garrett got Wade fired from that head coaching job because he wanted that job. And at that time, he was an offensive coordinator. He was calling the plays. He called some bad plays that he knew was not going to work. And we ended up we losing all those games, man. And um, Because like you just said, Parcel said that if you're not on the other side of that ball, the, the other coaches can bullshit you. And Jason Garrett, even though he was on the same side of the ball that Wade Phillips was, he bamboozled the man. He bullshit the man, called some horrible plays, got the man fired. And he got the job and, and didn't do nothing with it. Ten years of wasted of Jason Garrett. It's a coach for the Cowboys, man. Waste it. Jerry, you know, there's been a lot of talk about execution. I, I think you've mentioned it here already. Um, 
if the execution has become a, a problem to the extent that you get losses like the ones against New Orleans and Detroit, why are those players still the right ones for your team? Well, first of all, uh, where are you going to go to get any players? Seriously, where are you going to go to get any players for the uh, next week against San Francisco? Now, number one, I've seen these players. I've seen every one of them execute like you want the plays to be executed and do their job within the role. That didn't happen the other day, and we paid the consequences for us. But I've seen the players do it. It ain't having none this year at home. We don't allow four straight home games dating back to the playoffs. And three straight three straight home games this year we don't lost uh, again beat down in the ground. So evidently it ain't working. It ain't working at all, period. It ain't working at all. I know we have outstanding personnel. Very outstanding personnel. We just made our quarterback the highest paid player in the NFL. We just topped the receiver list charts. So we made our bed relative to how we're See, he just, he gave y'all what y'all wanted. He made that Prescott the highest paid quarterback in NFL. He gave C D Lamb his money. That's all you got was crying about. It don't it don't matter how long it took him to do it, but he did it. He was crying, crying, crying to make Dyke Prescott the highest paid quarterback in the NFL. And look what that got you. Look where has it got you. This man has regressed. Back to being turnover Dyke Prescott is what he resulted back in being. Now that he got that bag, he really can care less. We're going to approach with our key people uh, with the team. Uh, we were shorthanded out there uh uh, on defense, but everybody gets shorthanded. That's really not an excuse in the NFL. Your depth should step up there, and you should be able, if you can, to compensate to some degree. You can't compensate for uh, the gap, so to speak, that we had between the way our offense played and the way we were supposed to play. Now, I want to give Detroit a lot of credit for that. They came after us and got after us, and they put guys on top oh, yeah, of every offensive lineman you had, and they uh, came uh, came at it and uh, uh, put the kind of pressure that uh, gave Dak a lot of problems and gave our running game a lot of problems. We've got to be able to handle that. Jerry, I think the counter back when you said, where are you going to get the players you can't get them this week is, and you, you're aware of, of all the off-season topics. <laughs> You, yeah, but what is your counter? What is your damn counter? My counter I is... I really want to know where you would go or go get it. Now, don't tell me about should gotten a guy in the offseason. Why not? This isn't a damn word argument just because I'm not arguing with you. I'm dealing with how we line up against San Francisco, not what I did wrong last week or last month or two months ago or two years ago. So, if I really gave you guys... A list of all the things I've done wrong over the last few years. Uh, you couldn't be on this program for the next five years, steady, and go over it. But every now and then you do some right things, and at the end of the day you add it up, and the rights give you a better spot than the wrongs. But if you think for any minute right now, there'll be one Super Bowl champion. What do the others do wrong? There's one Super Bowl champion. Now we want to be that champion. And I'm sure not throwing the towel in. Jerry Jones has resorted to there's only one Super Bowl champion. What have the other owners did wrong and other general managers did wrong? Boy, Jerry Jones, is, Jerry Jones is in defense mode. You can tell with that answer right there, he's in defense mode. Boy, they, they had got on Jerry Jones last nerve because he know that the fan base is all up. They route all up. And they know that you know, we've been saying all the offseason that we need to run it back here to help Dak Prescott out. I don't know for what reason he needed a running back to help this sixty million dollar quarterback out. Uh, you know, so he knew that he knew that he needed a running back, so he still chose to take that sixty million dollars. So he didn't really care about the running game. But like he, like he just said a while ago, he get a chance to get the he got a chance to get the ball in his hand so he can lead his football team. <laughs> and so far it ain't look, it ain't looking that damn good. And today because of what happened out there Sunday. But I'm not gonna sit here and waste a lot of energy, a lot of time. Uh, let's talk about what I should have done back in 1907 or 19, <laughs> 2017. Shit, man. Come on. Come on. I've got more time than that, and Jer I actually don't even have time on this great show for looking back at decisions. Okay. So, Jerry, 1970, a little different from this past off season in building the team we're talking about today, which there was a lot of criticism that you guys didn't add, didn't spend, and don't add and don't spend and are not aggressive enough with some of the problems that are still 
haunting the Cowboys today that we see play out on the field. That that's the point of talking oh, about the off season. Oh, oh, I remember those criticisms very well. Okay, so what? Or are they playing out so to what? be accurate? What's your, what's your point? What's your point? My my point is, it seems like point? my. Listen, po- let me tell you what I'll do. Let me tell you what I'll do about it, Jerry. Uh, I will. Uh, uh, let us sit down and look at the decisions we've made over the last several years. Okay? I'll look at it. Now, if you think I'm interested on a, on a damn phone call with you over a radio. I say Joe pissed off. Say Joe pissed off. Boy, Jerry Joe ain't having it. Boy, Jerry Joe ain't having it. Boy, hey, this thing's going to get real good in a minute. You just watch it. Hey, hold your horses. It's about to get real good. And sitting here and throwing all the good out with the dishwater, you have got to be smoking something over there this morning. <laughs> I'm not. And I really don't, and I don't even want Just our listeners to listen to me, uh, to talk about this is not your job. Your job isn't to let me go over all the reasons that I did something, and I'm sorry that I did it. That's not your job. Well, my job it's, is to so ask get why. A job, or I'll get another. I'll get somebody else to ask these questions, man. Uh, oh, Jerry Jones said he would get somebody else to answer, to answer, ask him them question that he want that he want you to ask him. You don't get to ask Jerry Jones the question that the tough question because he don't want to answer the tough question because he know that the team is not that good and he know he made a very big mistake by signing that guy to a, a sixty million dollar contract. Yeah, yeah. Why they want? Why they want to ask Jerry why they signed that person got to that sixty million dollar contract? Because you know why? Because they egged it on too. That that uh, they were saying that uh, Jerry need to pay Dak Prescott what's the hold up here. He don't under, they don't understand why. Why didn't they, Why didn't they ask Jerry Jones about the sixty million dollars per year quarterback? See what I, see what I be saying when people try to when people want you to know something they, the, when it benefit them, then they'll ask you that question. But why did they not ask Jerry Jones that question? I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Everybody got their own agenda. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> Jerry, we're just we're we're we're, we're trying to figure out why the no, team no, is. I'm not, I'm not kidding. I'm not kidding. You're not going to figure out it's uh, what the team is doing right or wrong. If you are, uh, or any five or ten like you, you need to come to this meeting I'm going to today. There are 32 teams here. You're geniuses. <laughs> Jerry, okay? it, it, you all really think you're going to sit here with a microphone and tell me uh, uh, all of the things that uh, I've done wrong and without going over the rights? He telling you, you YouTubers, do you think y'all gonna sit in front of and talk uh, in front of a microphone and tell Jerry Jones what he need to do with his football team? You Dak Prescott fanboys, you think that Jerry Jones gonna let you, gonna sit down there and listen to a bunch of guys on the YouTube microphone tell him how to run his run his organization, huh? Fanboys, did you like that? You didn't like that, did you? <laughs> I know you did. He was talking directly to you. <laughs> and the guys on 105.3 the fan too he was talking to all y'all that trying to tell him how to run his football team y'all know Jerry Jones ain't having that man so I don't know why y'all keep like I said get on here and get everybody all riled up getting all mad like y'all really upset at Jerry Jones we already know Jerry Jones is renting this organization to the ground we already know this we already know this so why y'all be in y'all feeling so much why y'all want to put on that quarterback that 60 million dollar per year quarterback put it on that guy See, like I said, you're always deflecting blame, but except for where it's supposed to go. That's, that's what you guys are doing. Now, listen, we both know we're talking to a lot of great fans and a lot of great listeners. And I am very sorry for what happened out there Sunday. I'm sick about what happened Sunday. Now, I'm not talking to these guys who's on the end of this phone. I'm talking to you, the fans that are listening this morning. And we can spend a lot of time going over zigging and zagging. One of the stupidest things I've ever done that anybody has ever analyzed is by the Cowboys. It was an idiot that did that. So idiot things can turn into good decisions. Okay? Smart things can turn into bad decisions. The facts are that when you make one, you don't really know whether it's going to be good or not at the time. So let's let's just uh, go ahead. I'm trying to answer your questions, man. You want some you want some conversation this morning? You're getting it. 
<laughs> Jerry Jones say, Jerry Jones, y'all want that smoke? Y'all gonna get that smoke this morning. If y'all want that smoke, y'all gonna get that smoke this morning. And Jerry Jones say, I got time today. Jerry say, I got time today. I better believe that. Talk to him, Jerry. Jerry Jones here on the fan. Jerry, are you worried about fan apathy setting in? Well, I'm not worried about fan apathy. If you saw the letters and things I'm getting, that's the last thing from apathy. You're seeing very, very keen, intense. Of, of passion about what we're not doing and concern about what we're doing. And that's the reason that I love this thing is because you have that kind of passion. I love the passion. And I'm nobody more passionate than our Dallas Cowboy fans. I'll show you one thing, and I know you guys know it. Hey, Jerry Jones say we got the passionate fan base in America, and that is true because we got the biggest fan base in the world. But Jerry Jones say I'm used to this. I've been doing this ever since I've been owning the, the Dallas Cowboys. So, hey, I'm built for this. That's why this is the most valuable franchise in all the sports in the world. Even though it ain't working. Even though it ain't working. Even though we ain't won no Super Bowl going on 30 years. Hey, but we are still the richest, fran the richest franchise in all the sports in America. Now, let that sink in. So why do you think Jerry Jones should change now if he's been hey, making money, profiting it for all these years? You think he's going to sit out here and listen to a bunch of YouTube and tell him what to do with this franchise? <laughs> Y'all can go kick rocks. I'm not afraid to make decisions. And I can live with anything that we're talking about as far as criticism about those decisions. What I'm going to worry about is whether those decisions can pan out in a positive way. You've got a lot of reasons why they don't. And you've got a lot of teams up here looking around at some of the decisions they've made over the last few years. Just because everybody else is making bad decisions doesn't mean that justifies you making a bad decision. You say you so don't. We can, go into this. we can go into this. I'm saying. But Jerry Jones, you made one bad decision. When you signed that press got that $60 million a year contract, you made a bad decision. That was one of the worst decisions I can say, my for, my for myself, that was one of the worst decisions that Jerry Jones ever made while owning the Cowboys, giving Dyke Prescott $60 million per year. What I'm saying. Don't tell me what I'm saying. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you, you listen to what I'm saying. Jerry, why are you getting so mad at us? We're, we're just asking you why the blowouts are happening, the historical <laughs> differences at home. We're just asking what about it on behalf <laughs> of the fans, and you're getting you're getting real ticked off and mad at us. We're just <laughs> at, you, you, I'm not. Hey, can I tell you something, guys? I don't get mad at people that I can not be with if I don't want to be with. I don't get mad. Ooh. You're asking me for a response, and I'm giving you a response. We got to play better, and we got to play better at specific points. No, there's no looking for stepping out here and bringing in 20 new players between now and the bye. That's not the way it works. But I like the players that we have. You go around this league and you will see a high recognition of the quality of players we've got. We should be able to not have happened to us Sunday with our players that we've got. We shouldn't have the highest paid quarterback in the NFL and not having to have more production. But he's got to have blocking. He's got to. Hey, you heard you said, didn't you? There should be no excuse for the highest paid player in the NFL history not go out there and produce can't get a touchdown man you cannot get a touchdown you just got paid 60 million dollars you can't get the ball in the end zone against a formidable team so what they tell you that we're gonna happen in the playoffs if we make it to the playoffs and coming down the line we got to pay the 49ers falcons the eagles texans the commanders so what they're telling you man it shouldn't that shouldn't be a problem getting into that end zone if you can make out paid all this money that prescott i have the routes run right and the other thing he's got to do is it helps if he weren't playing somebody as strong as Detroit was Sunday. They were pretty strong. Man, so now you heard Jerry Jones, man. Jerry Jones got real uh, uh, offensive, man, and uh, defensive because he know, man, that, that this team is on the performing. And, you know, by him, uh, you know, giving everybody what they wanted, what everybody was talking about, pay that Prescott, even though it took a long time to do it, uh, hours before the first game. But the man got the job done. And for him trying to go get a running back, that that that, that didn't matter if he signed that press guy earlier or later, because Jerry Jones is a marketing genius, and he and he wrote that thing all the way out to the end before he signed that press guy. He already know he's going to do it, and and City Lamb the same way. 
But hey, man, that that, that was the worst decision Jerry Jones ever made, man. I thought he was going to hold out for sure and make that Prescott earn that money. But hey, the fans wanted it. Fans got it. Now they're complaining about this team underperforming, and uh, that Prescott don't have no help and all this that in the third man. This guy, yeah, yeah you guys would, would never seem to amaze me, man, with the excuses that you with the excuses that you made for that Prescott. I, I, hey, I never seen nothing like it before in my life, man. This guy here, you guys are, are are trying to cover up the play of a guy that's making the most money that any player has ever made in the NFL, and the NFL has spanned for a long time, and you guys continually, continuously make excuses for this guy, saying that this guy need all the help in the world. Now, like I said, while we were thought to win all those twelve games every year. And we wasn't winning anything, man. Other NFL teams get better. They're getting better while you out there, while you winning your games and got the team that you know winning all these games every year, going to the playoffs. Man, you got to cash in, man. You got to cash in. Dak Prescott has had a, enough help for him to reach the Super Bowl, man. I don't care. I don't care if he didn't win the Super Bowl or not. But Dak Prescott had enough talent on his team to at least make it to a championship game. Come on now, y'all got to come on, man. Y'all, y'all got to be real with y'allself. Y'all got to stop all this. Uh, uh, making all these cruises up, man, for Dak Prescott and defense and all this, that, and the third. Y'all need to stop that. Y'all need to stop, man. Come on. For real, man. Y'all, hey, but slowly but surely, you guys, come, some of you guys are coming around. Some of you guys are coming around, but, you, you, you know, you still got a, a couple of fanboys out there that still won't put blame on Dak Prescott because, you know, their fandom for this guy here is, is, is unbelievable. Uh, they probably got a, 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 a dresser draw full of baby baby lotion, baby oil, uh, but you probably purchased from P. Diddy. You know, they can rub Dak Prescott down, you know, rub his back for him, you know, all this, that, and the third because you guys are some uh, 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 P. Diddy fanboys when it comes to Dak Prescott. When it comes to Dak Prescott, and I wouldn't put it past none of you. But, hey, Jerry Jones take off, man. He take off uh, uh, about this this game this, this past week, man. Uh, uh, we got embarrassed, man. We got beat down in the grind. And, you know, hey. At least those guys from 105.3 The Fan, man, they had their own, man, because they, 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 they've been scared as Jerry Jones some tough question, man, because they know how this guy is, man, and, and you just seen that today, and it finally reached a peak with Jerry Jones. But it's not the first time that they, they, these guys had got into it with Jerry Jones, on, but it not have reached this type of level by him saying that he can, you know, get somebody else to answer these questions. Because Jerry Jones cannot fire these guys because they work they for uh, – they work for – Onyx, somebody like that. They don't, they don't work for Jerry Jones, really. They work for uh, some company, Onyx, something like that. Uh, not Onyx, but uh, some company that they work for. But see, what Jerry Jones is saying, that he, he can go on another radio show on the same station to, to another group of guys in a different time slot and you know get those guys to ask some questions because Jerry Jones don't own the radio station. He just What he does is choose to come on there every Tuesday and they'll do a little radio show after the games and talk about the game. So... Everybody talking about that Jerry Jones going to get these guys fired, all this and third. That, that's not going to happen. It, it's, it's not going to happen. So, you Dak Prescott fanboys, get out your feelings, uh, you know, because you guys are trying to make something so simple sound so bad. But I get it. Jerry Jones, as GM for the Cowboys, had failed the Cowboys, man. Uh, but to me, to be honest, the last couple of years, man, I think that this team put, put enough talent together, man, to uh, – Get these guys over the hump, but your quarterback is incapable of doing it. So, hey, you can blame everybody else you want to, but it's all going to start with the quarterback because that guy is straight garbage. If you ask me, he's trash. If you ask me, hit that subscribe button, man. Hit that like button, man. Leave a comment down below. Tell me what you got to think about Jerry Jones, man, and the heated exchange today with the radio station, man, out here in Dallas, 105.3 The Fan. Until the next time, it's your boy Breezy. I'm out. I'll...